three, two. What's up? This is Brad Biley, and welcome back to another episode of Insights, the podcast built to help you with your recruitment and digital marketing. As always, I'm joined by Haley Marketing's Director of Recruitment Marketing. He's Matt Lozar. Matt, how are we feeling this week, buddy? We're feeling good, Brad. How are you? I'm good. Fantastic week, Matt. We're flying through October. We're flying into Q4. Fall is here. The cold is here. I'll mm-hmm. tell you that. That mm-hmm. stinks. But Matt, it's uh, you know, it's upon us, man. We don't have many days left to cut our grass. We don't have many rounds of golf left in us. No. Enjoy it while it's here, bud. Enjoy it while it's here. Uh, yeah, October is flying by. I don't know if it's it started on a Sunday and all of a sudden <laughs> the month's like over. But um, Nuts. spooky season is here. <laughs> and we're going to enjoy a couple of our grass cuts and maybe a round or two of golf. But yeah, the East Coast, the, the switch flipped quickly. Yeah. And we're going to squeeze out as much as we can. Matt, let's get right to the show. You went to Staffing World. I didn't even get a t-shirt. What's going on here, bud? We we go on a vacation. Not a vacation, but we go to a conference. You couldn't even bring me back some merch. You couldn't bring me back, you know, uh, all I went to, I went to Staffing World and all Brad got was this lousy t-shirt type of present. First of all, you don't know that. I have not seen you since Staffing Good World. Good point. Um, I did go shopping on Thursday morning. More okay. for my my nine year old roommate than my podcast partner. I understand. So um, no, I didn't bring you back a t shirt. I honestly don't know what size you wear, so um, that's a poor excuse. Yeah. And next time we'll try to be better. I appreciate that. How was Staffing World? Staffing World's good. Um, good. Always jam packed days. Yeah. Um, really nice week in Charlotte. Good venue. Good. Um, some great keynote speakers. I think <laughs> the overall theme, and this is going to sound weird, and I was talking mm-hmm. it with. Um, Chief Strategy Officer, friend of show, Brad Smith, and some other people that won, especially Brad kind of put this together. It was like, it just feels uncertain was kind of the theme. Hmm. Nobody really knows what to do, yeah. um, which builds off the economy right now. Like me and you have talked about when the jobs report came out, jobs are growing, unemployment's staying the same, the wages are staying consistent. There's more people working than ever. The, the math doesn't add up. It doesn't. Um, it, it doesn't. So... It's uncertain on what people need to do. Some need job mm-hmm. orders, some need candidates. Um, we all know we need AI. We don't know what AI we need. It's it's an interesting spot for the industry. Let's stay on that wave. Then I want to ask about your talk. So if I forget, ask. I want to bring up the talk afterwards. With AI, I had an interesting thought the other day that I, I want to bring here. AI, I think we're we're ahead of ourselves. And I think we as an industry, as individuals, as consumers, whatever it might be, we need to pump the brakes. There are thousands of new AI tools. Every day, there's probably hundreds of new ones that come out. I think instead of saying, hey, we need to be doing this, we need to be using GPT, we need to be using um, whatever, I, I don't care what it is, we need to be using GPT, let's first figure out what the heck our problem is and then figure out if there's a tool to solve it. We're almost, Matt, running ahead of ourselves before we understand, hey, what is our issue that we're trying to solve? And, and Matt, that comes out of um, you know, me using, you know, there's an AI for that as a website, right? So there's an AI for that. It has a search bar. You type in your problem, and it spits out these tools for you. And I'm, I'm realizing more and more, I don't need more tools in my life. I need to help with the challenges that I have every day. Every day. Right. And, and Matt, I think if we pump the brakes, that might help us as we look at 2024. You're, you're indirectly referencing Bill Gates. We underestimate one to two years. We overestimate five to 10 years. And that's where it feels like. Yeah. And I've been in that camp, I feel like, for a few months when this all went crazy almost a year ago. Um, November 2022 is when I think Chet GPT came out and then it became more mainstream by February. Yeah. I took a step back and I was like, all right, when's the last time we had a really, really big change? And AI could be the biggest of all. Um, to me, I felt like the smartphone was one of them. Sure. It was like iPhone came out and it was like, whoa, you can do all this with, you know, something yeah. that like that size. And I went back to like my parents or just a different generation that would take longer to adopt and it took time. Yeah. And that's where I was like, all right, like you said, Brad, we gotta pump the brakes. Yeah. Um and figure out what we need to do. And I thought one of the keynotes was on AI, um, the Wednesday morning one, Paul, who is it, Kopolis? We'll call him Paul. And Paul. he talked, to, there was so much good stuff in there. But one of the things he talked about with AI, and I don't know if we want to go this way, was, you know, are you using it to save money or are you using it to make money? 
I thought that was a really nice takeaway for AI. Yeah, yeah it, it raises the eyebrows. Um, it does. But there's, it's just so much going on. I feel like the companies that can figure out will win. But like you said, Brad, the companies that figure out even just small incremental wins, which sounds weird to say with AI because it's supposed yeah. to do this big revolution, you can layer and implement it. You'll, your resistance to change with the company will be less. You'll be able to be more successful because if you throw ten AI tools at your team, you're you're cooked. You are done. You, so you know, Matt, find one or two that work and go from there. I just backed out of a team meeting today because our team was looking at an AI tool, and I, and I candidly said to the person I was running the meeting, I don't think I'm ready for this. I haven't spent enough time in the in the software. I'm not going to add any voice at the table if I join this meeting. So once I know more, I'd love to, but I I am no value in this conversation. I'm living over here. I'm doing very, very well with certain tools. Great. I am not going to be helpful here. And that's okay. Matt, your, your thought of are you saving money or making money? Phenomenal point and something that I think mm -hmm. I need to reflect on too. With AI, what are we doing here? What is, why are we here in the first place? And, and Matt, I think there's also a take of we sort of live in this echo chamber. So right now, mm -hmm. you know, the people that we surround ourselves with love AI and it's this buzzword that we can't get enough of. What we lose sight of is in the real world. People aren't talking about it eight hours a day. Matt, I was in mm -hmm. chat GPT literally for 10 hours on Tuesday. That's all I did all day from start to finish. And then I was so fixated on this problem I was trying to achieve. I, I spent time later in the night trying to figure it out and just continued working. Most people, my dad who fixes cars doesn't even know mm -hmm. what chat GPT is. So we, we do need to pump the brakes, Matt. We need to say, listen, how can the tool help us? But more importantly, what problem am I trying to solve in the first place? And, and Matt, one more thing, because I know you want to hop back in. You mentioned that small wins lead to big wins. I've been saying now for probably three or four months, it's progress, not perfection, right? And we are consistently looking as an industry at perfection. What's that one marketing thing that we can do to drive job orders? What's that one thing we can do to get applications? How can we instead flip that and have incremental progress instead of being so fixated on perfection. Friends, that I think is the key. Did you start using Peloton? Because that's Emma Lovewell's quote, progress, not perfection. If... Who says it? Emma Lovewell, progress, not perfection. I think it's her. So I don't know who that is, but Chris Bumstead, he goes by Seabum, four-time Mr. Sure. Olympia. That's also his phrase. Um, any of those companies like to sponsor the show, please do. Um, we need a sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> we need, sure. I'm but tired of you're buying right my with, own shirts. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like that's where the AI AI yeah. landscape is. Um, and being and I, my point I was going to get to was, and it's going to come back to a, a a principle of the show. You know, not you said about the what or the how, but when you explain the AI, it starts with why. Like, why do right. I need this? Like, it's these these core principles will last forever and that's what we need to figure out as more of that gets implemented so with staffing world i think that's the big one um you did forget to ask me again about my talk but it went well i talked about good how to level up your recruitment marketing to compete and win okay. which i wasn't sure how many people are going to show up because at haley marketing here in 2023 for probably the better portion of the middle part of the year it's been sales and job orders yeah have been a big issue but there was a lot of people, um, which was cool, you know, good. appreciative of the opportunity, appreciate everybody that came, appreciate the questions. I think it was a good um, talk. And the challenge with recruiting is people are still looking for tactics and whatnot, but it's coming back to quality. Everyone's talking about quality. It's where you can get applications, but if you can get quality applications, and there's so much that goes into that, probably another episode for another day, sure. but that's what people need. They're, they can struggle to get the job orders. They still have some struggling to get quality candidates. Yeah, that is a topic for another day. I don't even want to touch that because it, it is another topic mm. for another day. Let me ask you this. What did you end up wearing on stage? We talked about it for like three shows. I was worried about it. Talk to me. Talk um, to us. What do you, do you want? Like brands? Do you want, I it was khaki no, I pants a and a nice button did down we go shirt. Button up? Did we go zip up? No, button down shirt. I felt was good um, with, with khaki pants and down. Some, I do. Is it a button? I up? call it a button. I call it a button up, but I button See, down too. But I've always called it a button up. 
That's interesting. I do call it a button down because I you do button that. down. And, and if you listen back to the tape, like five seconds before, I called it a button down. <laughs> and then it is a zip up because you can't zip down. Um, Always wow, zip this up. Is, yeah. Wow, this is interesting. Yes, a nice button down shirt with some yeah. with some slacks. I believe is one of your coin terms. Has and then standard. just a nice a nice pair of dress shoes, and we'll call it a day. Good for you. I'm glad Staffing World went well. Uh, you also had some good good chatter at the booth about the show that you were telling me about. A ton of people came up. Um, Wild. It's surprising. I guess it's, yeah. it's, we're making an impact, which is great. Yeah. Um, there was also a conversation I had with the shark, Staffing Shark, Richard Rosner. I think we're doing some crossover content here in a couple months. Yeah. Just a, you know, how we're just trying to make an impact um, and help people grow their businesses. There's been some companies that can't afford marketing that, you know, have used the content from Haley marketing, not just this show, but our, all the content we put out there and to help. And that's how, you know, gets back to the core and the mission of Haley marketing to, to help those small to mid-sized companies, um, world-class marketing, fast, easy, affordable. So it was great to meet some people who listen to the show. Um, one man guy listens to it while he cuts his lawn. So I thought that was perfect. It ties it all together. Yeah. Well, hey, friends, we have a Staffing World 2023 recap coming up on Lunch with Haley. By the time you hear this episode, we will have already dropped the live version of that episode. But if you go to lunchwithhaley.com and click on Webinars On Demand, you can check out the Staffing World 2023 recap where our team shared all the things they learned at this year's conference. Hey, Team Haley attended many of the sessions at this year's Staffing World and in this Lunch with Haley, they shared what they learned from the keynotes and the breakouts. Again, to check that out, you'll go to lunchwithhaley.com. You'll click on Webinars on Demand, and you can watch that back whenever you want. Matt, let's talk about relationship building and relationship marketing. This is nothing new, but it's something that I have heard conversation after conversation after conversation, and I wanted to bring it to you. Matt, right now, I can't quantify it because I don't know the economic data. I know there are more jobs being listed. I know the jobs report. It looks like the, the, there are more jobs available. It seems though, based on the calls I have, nobody is hiring. So the clients that I'm talking to, and I, I say that sort of with finger quotes, no one's hiring. The clients that I'm talking to cannot secure job orders. It's a huge challenge for the industry right now. We can't close new business. We can't get new orders. Matt, one, are people hiring and are they just not working with staffing firms? Or two, maybe this isn't for us because I'm not an economist, but are people really not hiring? And then I have a follow-up to that. The follow-up yep. is do we need to focus more than ever on relationship building so that when people are hiring, we're playing the long game. Now, I know that doesn't put money into our pockets in October, but might it help us rebound stronger, faster in Q1? Take that as you wish, my friend. The, the economy part is so interesting. We, we've talked about some of that before, but job growth was high in September. Mm -hmm. Actually, the job growth in July and August was revised higher which hasn't yeah. happened for a while. Usually it's revised down. Okay. So there's even more job growth than people were saying. Unemployment ticked up um, in the summer months, I feel like to 3.8, but we're still under four, 22-ish um, months or something below 4%. One of the okay. longest streaks ever. Um, more people are in the workforce. Highest amount of people from 25 to 54 working in the last 20 some years. So hmm. are people hiring? I guess. But it yeah. seems like job orders are very hard. So then I go to the next step, which is a little scary. The staffing industry is usually a leading indicator. Mm -hmm. And if staffing companies are not getting job orders, is that already happening? Is it going to come even more? Mm -hmm. It's just so interesting what's happening because people are applying for jobs. Um, yeah. They're still applying. It's getting a little more expensive, but people are applying. Conversion rates are actually improving which either means the algorithms are getting better or people are a little more desperate and they're not clicking as often. So to answer the question, I don't know if people are hiring. I just hear the job orders aren't happening. I don't yeah. know if it's just replacement versus growth, which contradicts 
thing right. I said two minutes ago. So it's it ties all together. It's uncertain. I don't know. It's it's literally every conversation I've been on for the last month is how do we close more job orders? What do we do from a marketing standpoint to help nurture leads and warm up leads or drive leads? And these are all talented individuals. These are all established established marketing agency or I'm sorry, staffing agencies. But all of a sudden there's a switch, right? So so Matt, I can't speak on the economy side of things. I'm not that guy. Yep. And I don't want to pretend I'm that guy. But now more than ever, we need to double down on relationship building, relationship marketing, 101 of being a human, talking to people. Yep. Because exactly right. If you're not getting a job order today, and I understand the financials of that. I understand how scary that is. But if you're not getting job orders today, what can you do to help guarantee success in January? Or when this does flip, clients know to call you instead of Matt's staffing firm. And Matt, I, I cannot say it enough. And, and this is how I've been pretty much leading every call that I've been on is, okay, well, what marketing are we deploying to nurture relationships? What is your sales team doing to nurture relationships? And if you're not doing this, you know, how can you start doing that? I love the relationship marketing. It's it's yeah. another principle of the show and it's the long game, which can be difficult when you need short game revenue. And yeah. there's so many different tactics. You know, we're not, I don't think in that ugly R word recession no. um, in terms of ec economy, but we need to, we know companies that market during downturns um, improve out of the, improve faster when the upturn comes. Yeah. Um, so I think whatever you can do with awareness wise from that standpoint, but also, you know, the email, the calls, the drop-ins, all those different tactics to just stay in front because it's like a passive candidate. It's the same mm -hmm. thing. I live in the recruitment world when yep. that passive candidate might not be ready to apply to Brad's staffing agency today, but the, when the day comes when he's just sick of the job and it, you know, the straw yep. that broke the camel's back, I'm going to do that. So those tactics, those same strategies on the sales side is what's important right now. All those different ways to you would use to, you know, nurture passive candidates. How almost do you need to nurture passive companies? Hmm. Yeah. I like that a lot. Um, I watched the light bulb go off in your own mind when you said that. That was pretty awesome. I know never... Matt, to me, it's it's very much like a real estate agent, right? You you buy a house every yeah. X number of years. Some are more than others. Some are fewer than others, right? My my realtor, first off, I would probably work with somebody different the next time around, but that's a different conversation for a different day. But they need to stay top of mind. Otherwise, you go to somebody else, right? So, so friends, if you're prospecting, what are you doing to stay top of mind with clients, with prospects, with former clients, with individuals you've worked with in the past? Now more than ever, if you are not securing job orders, you need to look at your process, which is going to lead phenomenally into segment three, Matt. What are you doing to drive those orders? And if you're not closing them today, what can you do to systematically improve your chances of closing them in January? Matt, if you don't mind, I'm going to slide right into to segment three. We do not need to be married to the marketing that we're deploying this afternoon. Friends, we are able and willing and should look at challenges, look at goals, look at objectives, and pivot our marketing based on where we're at today, where we need to be at next quarter. Matt, right now, I am talking to too many people who are sort of set in this lane of here's what we're doing because here's what we've always done. But if you can't close, job orders, if you're not getting the right prospects to your website, if you're not having the right conversations with people you've worked with 10 years ago that you're not working with now, then you need to change what you're doing. If you are just going through the repetition of we're doing it because we've always done it, friends, that is a recipe for going out of business. And that is a recipe for staying in sort of the mud that we're in right now. Matt? I hear a challenge in that and we don't want to do what we've always done and because definition of insanity but right. how often should we change because we don't want to change daily we don't want to change weekly right. so how quickly and how agile should we we be if it's recruitment marketing but you're probably coming more sales side because that seems like the challenge right now how often should people adjust and be and be agile we need to have the courage to evaluate what we're doing 
I would say every, that's a massive question, Matt. Mm -hmm. We need to have the courage to evaluate what we're doing every month at a minimum. We need to evaluate bigger picture what we're doing every quarter. And then we need to look at what we're doing every year. Matt, it, it, it's breaking it down, right? It's saying, I want to achieve a certain goal. We've mm. done this so many times on Insights. I want to achieve X. Matt, I want to pay off $1,000 in debt by this time, 2024. Great. I don't have an extra $1,000, but I have an extra $5 every week. Will that get me there? No, you'll fall short. So what does that math look like? And then checking in with yourself to say, okay, how am I doing? We need to do that with our businesses. We need to be evaluating what is the goal? What is the, more importantly, the challenge? What challenge are we facing right now? Okay, great. This is the challenge. Okay, here's the goal. Here's how we're going to overcome that challenge. And then look at everything we're doing. And is it marching us towards that goal in overcoming that challenge? Or is it doing something completely different that doesn't matter right now? Matt, there are so many individuals that I'm speaking with day after day who are saying, Brad, we cannot close a new job order to save our lives. But everything that they're doing is to drive more applications. Okay, well, we need to think about what we're doing to switch that up because yes, applications are necessary, but if we're not closing orders, where are you going to put all those people? There needs to be a, a partnership of both. So, so Matt, I, I danced around it. I got a little passionate about it. How, how often should we be evaluating it? The second you feel like it's not working or the second you feel like you're taking a misstep is the second you stop and say, listen, why are we doing this in the first place? Or if it is working, we do more. But a thousand percent, you, a thousand, a thousand you, percent. And, and let me cut you off, man. Too, too often I hear, oh, this, this worked. This is working. We can stop doing a little bit of this and do more of that. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And, and I think one of the, the best places that I hear that time after time is something like search engine optimization or PPC, right? We're getting really good inbound leads from Google search. So we can now take that budget and move it somewhere else. No, you're getting good leads from organic search because of all the work that you've done. Do more of it and get more leads. What are we doing here? Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I think the goal strategy tactics is where I came from. As you, as you danced around and got passionate, you know, the goal yeah. is still going to be, I need 10 new business leads a month for the next yeah. 12 months. Okay, great. And then the yeah. strategies are, we're going to try if it's social in, or inbound, outbound, whatever it is, you whatever. know, that's that Those are going to say, maybe the tactics change that we really got to evaluate those tactics underneath or the messaging, you know, the call to action. That's the stuff that we can keep adjusting and be really agile with. We're, we're not going to change every week from business to recruiting, business to recruiting. The market doesn't flip no. that fast. So no. I think keep looking at those different tactics at the lowest level and seeing what's working continue to optimize like any marketing, there's not going to be a recipe that Brad and I have that you can use um, to, to be successful. There's, there's strategies and tactics you can try, but keep adjusting and tailoring to your audience, to your market, to your industry, and, and constantly work to, you know, change what's not working. But like Brad, you know, like we said, if it is working, do more, squeeze as much as you can out of it while it works. A thousand percent. Right. And, and that's like when, when social media was sort of the wild west and we were seeing a ton of success and a ton of impressions from Facebook. Mm -hmm. We're seeing a ton of success and impressions on LinkedIn. Matt, I have LinkedIn for data, a LinkedIn data for you. Uh, probably next show. I'm, I'm running a test right now. I'm, I'm posting different kinds of content on LinkedIn every single day. Right now, statistically, the worst piece of content that I shared is a link to an article. Um, oh. Kind of crazy. Didn't expect it. Maybe it was just by chance, but in not what is now a 12 day test, the statistically the lowest impressions have come just from sharing a link to an article. But Matt, my point before everyone says, Oh, Oh crap, we shouldn't share links on LinkedIn anymore. Mm -hmm. That's not the case. The point is to look at your data. What is working leverage? What is working and do more of it. And that's why I'm running the test is it's finding, okay, how can I get my messaging in front of more people? What works on LinkedIn, do more of that and do less of the other stuff. You got anything? If not, I got one more rant that I got. Let it out, Brad. I, I think too often, Matt, we wait until we really feel the pain and mm. that's when we make a change. And we wait until we're really desperate and we need to cut marketing because we have two clients and we used to have 12. And now we, we need to cut things and we need to, we need to be strategic with how we're spending money. 
we, we, we wait and we wait and we wait and we wait and we hope and we hope and we pray until it hurts. And then we say, you know what? I got to change something. And Matt, that, that's like health and wellness, right? You get to a point where all of a sudden you can't run a mile or you can't walk around the block or your health doesn't, you know, your leg hurts when you wake up, whatever's going on. It's like, you know what? I've, I've waited too long. Now I need to go to the gym. What if instead we, we had preventative care instead of, you know, correcting, you wouldn't be in that spot in the first place. And Matt, maybe that's the analogy is, is how can we think about preventative care for our marketing? What can we do that sets us up for success in 2025, 2026? What is that long game so that friends, we don't have to wait until we feel the pain when this eventually shifts and we can't find candidates, whatever it might be. What can we do today to say, listen, here's where I want to be in 2026. Here's what I'm going to do to get there. Yes, we're going to make tweaks around the, uh, along the way. But most importantly, this is my North Star. We need really good leading indicators there. And you know, it's something we're trying to do at Haley Marketing and like any business is looking at. It's trying to make sure you know what's coming and seeing that before those lagging indicators tell you you went from 10 to 2 clients or whatever the right. metric is. So it's, it's being on top of that and not just hoping it's going to change. It's, it's having that, that visionary and probably experience of knowing your business and knowing the industry, because if you wait too long, you could be out of business. Right. You don't want to change too quickly. So it's that balance um, to really find the right indicators that will tell you something's happening and to use that data to make, make the best decisions and, and constantly um, change your business strategy. Matt, I love that show. We broke down Staffing World. We broke down how to not be married to your marketing. We broke down sort of what's going on in the economy from two guys who aren't economists. Uh, hmm. But Matt, what do you say, man? You want to get out of that one? Yeah, let's go. That's our show. And thank you for listening to another episode of Insights. If you found this episode valuable, we would love to know. You can message Matt or Brad on LinkedIn to share your thoughts. If you have a question for us, you could tweet us at Haley Marketing and let us know your e thinking or email info at HaleyMarketing.com. And of course, if you need a hand with your marketing or recruitment marketing initiatives, we would love to help. You can message info at HaleyMarketing.com and be sure you tell them Insights sent you. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you smash that subscribe button. From my co-host, Matt Lozar, this is Brad Biley. We'll see you next time.